Habari zenu? Welcome people. My name is Michaela Meme. Um I call myself the world changer. Uh that's my only title that I stick to. I, I call myself the world changer. And as a world changer, I've taken a personal oath on my life as someone who believes he not only can change the world but is changing the world with every breath that I take. And that oath is heaven is my right and heaven is my responsibility. Yes? This word, responsibility, when we hear about the word man, we hear about the word manhood. The first thing someone said when they were, you were asked, what do you think of manhood? Someone said responsibility. Yeah? Now I'm going to tell you look for free that growing up, the last thing on my plate was responsibility. And it's, taken, it's taken me years of hardcore beatings from life to make me finally stand up <laughs> and take responsibility. One of the reasons I ran away from responsibility early on in my life is because all I wanted from I was born was freedom. All I wanted from a, let me see around a hand. Who wants freedom in their life? Who thinks freedom is important? Let me see your hands if you believe freedom is important to you. Yeah? Cool. And we all love freedom. That's what we sing, that's what we sing the, the liberation songs about, right? That's what we grow our natural hair for, right? Yes? Mm -hmm. That's where we decide to, you know, sing, speak in our own language, right? In public. Yeah? It's this word called freedom. We want the freedom to express. Even those of us who go out on a Friday night and buy three bottles and drink them all, it's because we are chasing freedom. Who can tell me anything? Let me drink what I want to drink. You know what I'm saying? And in our pursuit of freedom, our genuine need and desire for freedom, whatever it means to you, to you, to you, to you, it's going to culture itself differently. But that word freedom is important to all of us. And my whole life, it's the only word I stuck to. It's the reason I wouldn't commit in a relationship. I want my freedom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Am I lying? No. This is what we do as men. I want my freedom. I'm a man. I need to exercise my rights. I don't want no one to hold me down. I need my freedom. But what is it? You know, we've got so much data now. Yeah? But what is it that I realized after a while, while I was chasing my freedom, while I was running away from all kind of responsibilities in the name of my freedom, and life wasn't supporting me any better, in fact, because of this so-called freedom, I'm now having to deal with Bad relationships, sickness in myself, <laughs> missed opportunities because of freedom. Until I realized, because <laughs> I'm free. Like I said the other day, be free right now. <laughs> I'm free right now, truly. And the only thing that has given me my freedom, guys, and I, have, you ever, have you ever been sitting there and you have one of those hits blood moments? <laughs> you say, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> the only time I found freedom is when I took responsibility. Damn! I didn't realize the one thing I had been running from my whole life. I don't want a job. Don't put me on a contract. <laughs> the one thing I've been running for my whole life was responsibility and I didn't realize. I'm talking about within the last 12 months. That's how recent it was for me. I didn't realize that the only thing that had granted me freedom in life is when I took responsibility. And that is what we're talking about today. A man has to exercise his freedom. He is here to govern. A man is here to rule. 
a man is here to project. But if a man has nothing to have responsibility over, what is the use for a man? That's what our sisters are asking us today. That's what they're asking us. What is the use for these guys? If it's just for the vagina, we can sort that out ourselves. Real talk. That's what the women are saying today. We have to be, like the brother said, we have to be able to see ourselves as men outside the agency of sexual interactions. Now, we could go on and talk about all the situations that have created that that, that situation for us as men, yes, we know a foreigner, an alien, an unnatural person has come into your home and struck you away from your responsibilities. That is in all of our histories. Yes, my parents are from the Caribbean, Jamaica and St. Vincent. Yes, but all of us, regardless of tribe, nation, if you're an African, this is your story. Sendio. This is your story. So we know that. And I don't want to use this time at all to talk about that story. We've been listening to that story for time. If you want to know about that story, go on YouTube, talk to a scholar, read books. We can all name our favorite author on African history. But right now, Mandem, we're talking about the African future. We know African history. I'm not here to talk about, yeah, because, you know, they took me from, from somewhere in Africa to Jamaica and they whipped me. I'm like, yeah, we know that shit, man. We know that shit. Yeah, Marcus Garvey was my hero. He, he fought for black people. He never even went to Africa. He had four million followers in Africa. He did this. He did that. Oh, yeah, Dadan Kamathi, he was a general. He was this, he was that. Ongai Madai, she was this, she was that. Mandela, Winnie, no. Mandela, no. Winnie, no. But meanwhile, your life is going on right now. Meanwhile, <clears throat> we are touching the ages of our heroes. <clears throat> Am I lying? We are touching the ages of our heroes. Are we going to be a generation of masturbators? Of all of our, oh, all of our heroes. <laughs> Laugh so it sinks in. Because it's, it's funny because it's so serious. And the most serious things are funny. We are sitting here right now. Your life is going on right now. But unlike our heroes, we have the agent of technology to communicate with our brothers and sisters in seconds. You want to talk about Harriet Tubman taking black people all the way from South America to North America, running back through the underground tunnel? Meanwhile, you can pick up your phone, yeah, press live and touch millions of people in seconds. Are we still, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. We're not talking about history. We're talking about the history we are creating for our children. So my oath to myself, heaven is my right. What do I mean by heaven? No matter what spiritual background you come from, yes? They always speak of a heaven. Samadhi, yes? Nirvana. They always speak of a euphoric state that you get to experience. When I say heaven, <clears throat> I'm talking about seven fundamental things that I know every human being wants to live in truth. Love, peace, freedom, happiness, health, and wealth. Who can resonate with the seven things I just said? Truth, love, peace, freedom, happiness, health, and wealth. For me, when I say call myself a world changer, I'm saying that I understand that in order to exist in a world that sits in my heart, and the, and the heights of my imagination, in order to exist in that world, I must exist here first. How can I project something to you that I do not have? Ask me for a lighter. Lighter? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> 
Yeah? Even if I wanted to give it to him. Yeah? He may have the ganja. But if I ain't got the lighter and he ain't got the lighter, none of us can enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, none of us can enjoy it. So if I'm saying this is the world I want to live in, then I must make sure that I'm ready to present that to the world, regardless of circumstances. This is what this platform is all about. Because what I've been getting over the last couple months, walking around, connecting with my brothers from different places, my sisters, all over the country and all over the world, everyone is having the same conversation. <laughs> and you know, like you know, like before, this kind of thought of change and revolutionary change, yes, an evolutionary change, <laughs> was always like you and your guys in a bedroom sounds <laughs> making. You and your small little community. Now, I'm walking into all kind of establishments everywhere in the world, every kind of person you can imagine, and everyone is having the same conversation. So I want to play my part in this change. Yeah? I want this forum to be somewhere we all get familiar with the people in the room. There's 7.5 billion people on earth. Yes? Mm -hmm. Nearly 4 billion of those people are African. <laughs> but you're the minority. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall for that trickery. Now, let's just say, even if it's just an African problem, yeah? 4 billion people on earth. Give me a, how many problems do you have? So give me a figure. <laughs> <laughs> Think of your, just, just I, spend the next 10 seconds trying to just calculate your problems into a one sum. Yeah? How many problems do you have? Like 50. <coughs> just 50. So. 99. 99 is a bitch one. <laughs> <laughs> so how much problems do you have? I said 70, that's so specific. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking if you were staying there, yeah, <laughs> you were 71. You were actually the one that came. <laughs> How many problems do you have? 50. Maybe. At capacity. Good. How many problems do you got? 90. 90. <laughs> Are you seeing where I'm going with this? Yeah. I know where, I know you don't get me. You don't. There's 4 billion people, yes? And if everyone focused on becoming an answer to only one of those problems, we'd be able to solve all of our problems, all of our needs. You understand? Mm -hmm. The problem is today, we crave, we yearn for freedom, but we run away from responsibility. They said we're here to talk about the African man. African man is the free man because he is a man of responsibility. In African communities, <laughs> the first gift you get is responsibility. <laughs> As a child, that's your first gift. Yes? Look after your brother with his goat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah? These things are what is going to give you the key to the freedom that we are all talking about, that we are all praying about, but haven't yet made the right calculations to get the result that we are looking for. Yes? My, me personally, just to speak a little bit about my journey um, and the reason I'm here, <laughs> in Africa, in Kenya, um, and what I'm, what I'm doing, because, you know, to most people, I just appeared, you know? <laughs> okay, like that's it. For me, um, 
I don't want to go on a long story, but like I said, from the from from my earliest point of view, I've always wanted to be free. That's been my only um, route that I've pursued in life. It's never been a particular career. I chose music because as a young black man, music is your easiest access to freedom. <laughs> <laughs> when everyone else is holding you down, yeah, get these drums. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? True. And so, but at the core of me has been freedom. I reached a point in my life where I started to understand that what I was pursuing in terms of what the world said was freedom, fame, celebrity, status, money, which were all avenues that I was placed in as a child to, uh, I guess, follow into, yes? I started to see the closer and closer I got to that thing, I started to see that freedom was not on the other side of many of these things that were being presented to me. Yes, money, notoriety, but freedom. That's what I was always looking for. Freedom. What's going to make me free? And that had led me to um, feeling like me, myself, as a black man, if I'm to be truly free, I have to be able to be my 100% self. I'm not free if I have to change my name, Kidogo, just to get, get past. I'm not free if I have to, you know, lighten up my voice and small up myself to get, to get through in life. I'm not free. I have seen, to cut a very long story short, I have seen that the only way I am able to be free as a black man and we as black men and women across the world are going to be free is if we get to be our 100% natural self. Our 100% natural self. Not just aesthetically, yes, but our way of thinking, our perception. Yes? That is our only way to freedom. And what I've seen currently, our current mindset of expecting people to do things for us, expecting someone to change their view of you before you change it of yourself, except someone to grant you permission somewhere that they have cultivated for themselves exclusively. Yes? Instead of us doing that, we have to take responsibility for the freedom that we wish to exist in. And not in talk. I'm, I love talking, but I really, really love talking and walking. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, I like walking and talking. Let's hold hands as we walk to what it is that we say we want to do. That's the only way we're going to be able to have the freedom that we're all praying for as a collective people. Our only problem today is that we value everything except ourselves. We value everyone's opinion except our own. Everyone's perspective, everyone's way, everyone's culture, everyone's design of life except our own. But we still remain at the bottom of everyone else's imagination. See, it's okay if someone else's imagination made you equal and on par and granted you the freedom that you wanted, but so far, as history can show us, we are always at the bottom, at the foot, the stool of everyone else's imagination for us. And it hurts it hurts. It hurts so much. Watch this. And I'm glad there's a couple sisters here so they can hear. That pain has made us exercise toxic behavior against our women. Because the last thing we had power over 
when everything was taken from us, was our women. And this has been the only way a man, a man's last rule, when you took away his land, his culture, his system of community and nation building, well, if it's just me and this woman, this is all my, all of this, you, the stuff you, you see what, as I said, he said something very powerful. A man showed his manhood out there. Because when you come into the homestead, this is the woman's domain. It's the woman's domain. In fact, you leave it out there. You take off your, your armor and fall into the abyss of woman. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. But what happens when you shove the man and the woman in the same place, cut the man off from doing his man thing, where is the energy going to go? Then if you can't kill the one who kills you, who are you going to kill? The one, the, one who, the one who you can kill. And killing ain't just taking someone's life, but draining them of their own power, their own beauty. We know this history. I don't need to go over it, but I'm saying today, family, we're back. We are back. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to share my mind with you lot just a little bit. Please understand, we are back. Yeah, man. We're back. There is nothing in your way anymore. Only what you think. You know, like the, you've seen the pictures where you tie the horse to the, to, the, to, the little, to the little chair and it doesn't move because he's used to being physically tied to a pole. That's where we are. Some of us are looking at white supremacy like it's the pole, it's a little chip. Move that thing, bro. I'm not even, it's not even, it's, it's so not even, it's so not even the thing. It's not that, like, the white man is not powerful, again. That's why he's your best friend today. I hate racism. He's your best friend today because he needs you as a friend. Because he's praying you have mercy on him. He's praying. So he has to clean up everything. That's why he's really in your community. He's trying to do good, but still messing up. <laughs> like genuinely, that's what confuses you about white people. You see them, you look what they're doing, and it's so horrible, but you meet them, and they're just so nice. You can't even acquit it. This is evil, but Jack is cool. <laughs> so you're just... Because... <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> and you're looking at it from that perspective. It's not that he doesn't know how to do it. It's not his responsibility. If he knew how to do it, your world would reflect it. <laughs> you're waiting for the Muzungu to have a change of heart, a change of programming, when it's you who should be teaching them to be natural. Because that is the only thing that makes this world survive. As they're learning now. Quick, everyone, recycle. <laughs> Quick, everyone. Sustainability. <laughs> Quick, everyone. Mm -hmm. Organic food. Eco this. And, and the African ancestors are looking like, really? <laughs> African our ancestors are like, really? So tell me more about using uh, this uh, thatch wood on your <laughs> Our ancestors are like, recycling. I had another one of these hips blunts moment. When you're in England, there's a lot of companies who, who fly over, um, NGOs who fly to Africa and they say, oh, you know, we're going there to show them about recycling because, you know, they have a very, um, you know, they don't think they just litter. <laughs> Africans, they throw stuff in, in their communities, just piles of plastic and da 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 da. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. And then I'm walking now, I'm in Kenya, I'm walking, I'm seeing, I'm thinking, and I'm like, but. Africans are just doing what they usually do. Does that make sense? Yeah. If everything you use is natural, then you cast it to nature. <laughs> do you understand? Only an unnatural person can create plastic. Does that make sense? Plastic was made in a laboratory in Europe in the 50s. 
and they brought it here and gave it to you. So as natural men and women, you get your water, alafu. <laughs> Does that make sense? But now they are running back to your very methods. What does that say to you? We are the power. What does it say to you that they have to, they have to come to Africa to create their best technology? No, 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 please. Because I don't, look, I'm not here to like tickle our egos because we all do this in our spare time. You get what I'm saying? We all follow those hashtags, black magic, black girl magic and melon in this and conscious that and ital and Dr. Sebi. Now we all follow, so that's your own space. I'm not here to say that. I'm here to say something very real to you. If that's what they have to do, what does that mean you are? What does that make you? Think about that. Original G. The source. Not the not the source. <laughs> so, <laughs> the source. Honest think of, no but think think about that more than just a complimentary word. Yes? I'm not here, it's not about boosting your ego. I want you to think about that what that means. When you naturalize yourself as an African person, man and woman. Yes, when you naturalize yourself, you, you put your system of thinking on par with nature. And if nature is the fountain and source for the world's wealth, what does that make you and the things that come from your brain when you think naturally? Yes, the ideas, the systems of of, of community, of, of any industry you can think of, what does that make you? Today, we only suffer from being unnatural. That's the only thing we, we suffer from being unnatural. We all know our creative abilities. We've seen it. But because we have lowered ourselves to the standard of thinking of the unnatural one, we are suffering greater than them because they are doing, what's this? What's this? I'm going to hurt you with this one. They are doing their best. <laughs> Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They are doing their best. <laughs> yeah? You ever seen a child try and put back something that fell down? And the shit's like just three three feet higher than them and they can't reach doing their best but when you put yourself to the standard of a child now imagine you boast about being the oh we are africans we create the civilization everyone comes you boast yes melanin all you know the black woman created everyone you know what i'm saying we boast about these things but we don't think about it practically if that's the truth then these are your children why are you going to them for any form of understanding? You didn't do it when you met them. <laughs> you didn't leave Africans to travel the world. There is no African that left Africa looking for white people. 